is up everyone? It is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. So with college decisions coming out throughout the month of March, today I'm going to be talking all about what is the cognitive science major at UC Berkeley. Because honestly, for me, going into college, I've never even heard of cognitive science before. It's not like one of those super popular majors that everyone knows about, like political science, economics, computer science. So today we're going to do a rundown of what is COGSI and the requirements in order to major in COGSI at UC Berkeley. And so if you are new here, hello, my name is Rachel. I just recently graduated from Berkeley in May 2020, where I double majored in cognitive science and legal studies. And so if you wanted to learn about how I chose my double major, I have a how I chose my major video on my channel, which I'll have linked down below. And so also, if you're a student applying to colleges this upcoming year, you should definitely check out Study Hall College. College Consulting. It's a team of myself and other Berkeley students where we specialize in reviewing college application essays as well as consulting one-on-one -on -one with students or parents who may have questions or want extra advice. So definitely check out our website and social medias and blog. We post tons of daily tips over there. So without further ado, let's get started. So first, I feel like the biggest question is what even is cognitive? cognitive science. And you know, I get that. It literally sounds like a mash of words together. For me, applying to jobs and internships and stuff like that, people usually ask or they don't really know what it is. So if you are interested in COGSI, you should really have like an elevator pitch of what is cognitive science that you can tell people. Basically in Cognitive Science 1, Intro to COGSI and a lot of other COGSI classes that you'll take, they will say that cognitive science is an interdisciplinary field where you are studying these six main topics. So the six main topics that you'll study with cognitive science are philosophy, linguistics, anthropology, neuroscience, artificial intelligence, and psychology. And so what drew me to cognitive science is because it is so interdisciplinary. You get to take courses in all of those fields, so if you do like a lot of different things, then that might be a good choice for you. Versus maybe if you knew that that you really, really liked computer science or psychology or linguistics as an entire field more than you liked those other subjects, then maybe just majoring in psych or CS would be a better choice for you so you don't have to take all of those other classes. So in order to declare the COGSI major at Berkeley, you first have to start off with taking the prerequisite courses and you need a grade of C or higher in the class. So now there are three prerequisites that you need to take in order to declare the COGSI major. The first prerequisite is in data science. This is a new requirement because I did not have to take this class in order to declare the major. The second class that you need to take in order to declare the major is a calculus course, so either Math 1A or Math 16A, or you can get a 3 or higher in your AP exams, so AP Calc AB or AP Calc BC. So I skipped out of that one because I took those math AP exams, so honestly, taking those AP classes, IB courses, is a great way to skip out of the lower division things, so maybe you can graduate early or do a double major. And then the final class that you need in order to declare is a computer programming course, so either CS61A or Engineering 7, and I actually took both of those classes, and they're both very difficult. <laughs> Even though people say like, oh, E7 is a lot easier because you're coding via MATLAB, it's like, not easy either, I don't know. They like started to make that class really, really hard when it used to be like an easy A or whatever for people, but no, it's still difficult. <laughs> so after you take the prerequisites, then you can declare the cognitive science major. And so with the major, there are some other lower division classes that you need to take in order to graduate. 
The other lower division classes are a disciplinary overview course, which is either taking COGSCI 1 or COGSCI 1B or COGSCI N1. For me, I took Cognitive Science 1. Another lower div requirement is in discrete math, so you can either take Math 55 or CS 70. I took Math 55 because honestly, CS 70 is like one of those hardcore killer courses that everyone who's computer science talks about. So so like similar with CS61A, you have a lot of students in those classes who are wanting to major in computer science and so for CS, to declare the major, you need a 3.3 GPA. So that means you have to get above a B plus in all of your intro classes for computer science. It makes these CS courses really, really like cutthroat and there's a lot of students trying to get those A's and high grades, which makes it harder for someone like me. Like I don't really like computer science, you know, I'm not naturally gifted. If you were to take those CS classes, then you would be competing with all of those other computer science majors. So I took Math 55, but honestly, Math 55 was super difficult as well. So in that class, you're not competing against the computer science majors, but then you're competing against the math and stats majors who need Math 55 in order to declare math or stats. It's not an easy A class either. And then the final lower div requirement is a neuroscience requirement and so in addition to those lower div requirements then you need to take one class in each of these six distribution categories so the categories are cognitive neuroscience cognitive psychology computational modeling linguistics philosophy and society culture and cognition so I have written down here the classes I took in each of those distributional categories, so I will go through them for you all. For the cognitive neuroscience requirement, I took COGSCI 190, which is special topics in cognitive science, and our special topic focus was on brain damage. So this was such an interesting class. I thought learning about brain damage, IEDs, different disorders of the brain, it was so interesting, but I was looking online today and it looks like this class is no longer offered under this distribution requirement but maybe it's like a seasonal thing so if you wanted to take it you just have to like keep waiting or keep looking for it. For the cognitive psychology requirement I took psych c143 which is language acquisition. I thought this class was super interesting also because you got to learn how language forms in like people and different animal species and so like going through the stages from like birth to toddler to adolescence and we talked a little bit about the deaf community and sign language and we also talked about communities that don't have a language and now they're creating their own language and how it's changing and evolving year over year. For computational modeling, I took COGSI 131, which is computational models of cognition, similar to the lower div classes that you have to take. If you take CS 188, which is the other option that you can take, there's only two choices for this category. Same thing like taking CS70 versus Math 55, like everyone says CS188 is killer also. And so I was like, okay, I will take the COGSI version of this class, so 131. And I thought it was interesting. You basically got to code AI and so that was pretty cool and definitely I feel like a lot easier than CS188, but it definitely wasn't like easy, you know? I still have those late nights, frustrations, going to office hours, trying to figure out why your code doesn't work. I just tried to steer clear of anything straight CS because I knew that it would be very, very difficult for me. For the linguistics category, I took Linguistics 100, which is Introduction to Linguistics. And this was really cool also. As you can see, all of the classes that I choose to take in the categories should be interesting because you have the choice of what you want to take from the list that they give you. So you really shouldn't take like classes you don't want to take or like that are boring to you. So this one was really cool because it talked about morphology, syntax, phonetics, semantics. So basically how language is broken down and then formed into sentences and stuff and it was really really interesting. 
For my philosophy requirement, I took philosophy three, which is the nature of mind. So like for all of my other distribution requirements, they're all upper division, but this one for philosophy, I originally had signed up for an upper div philosophy class, and then I was in it for like the first two weeks of a semester, and I was like, no way, <laughs> this is way too hard. All of these philosophy majors that like can think philosophy, and I'm like, yo, I don't really think like that and so I was like okay let me drop into a lower division one which I could totally do because I had enough upper div level credits because you do need a certain number of upper division credits and lower division credits in order to graduate basically it's a way so that you just can't take lower division requirements and graduate with a degree having only taken like lower div courses but for philosophy 3 I'm sort of like eh on I, I honestly can't tell you what I learned in that class Class. And you know, like I do think philosophy is interesting, like in my best and worst classes that I've taken at UC Berkeley video that I'll have linked down below if you wanted to check out. My freshman year I took a philosophy class that was like super interesting and it was one of my best classes that I've taken at Berkeley. And like with the list that they give you for classes that you can take, not all of these classes are offered every single semester. So you really have to figure it out because you might get like trapped if no good classes are being offered and then you have to take one of these other classes that you may not necessarily like. For the society, culture, and cognition requirement, I took sociology 150, which is social psychology. This one was interesting also, but also I feel like it was sort of like common sense in a way. <laughs> on top of that, for the cognitive science major, then you need to take three electives. Online there is a big list of electives that you can take and that would fulfill the elective requirement. So for me, I took Psych 110, which now fulfills one of the requirements you need in order to declare the major. My second elective was Information C167. This one was really, really cool because it's all about like social media, how people create communities online, Online, in group and out group and how like social media affects our everyday lives and then finally my last elective was legal studies 181 psychology and the law and so this one actually isn't on that list that they provide you of cog sci elective courses that you can take but if you do find a course that you think could fulfill the elective requirement you could actually submit a petition to have that course count as an elective for you so that is what I did so I was killing two birds with one stone because this legal studies course was actually something I could use for my legal studies major requirements and then with submitting the petition I got it as an elective for cognitive science which was very very good and so basically with those petitions you just have to figure out and say why you think this class can fulfill the cognitive science elective and I really loved this psychology and the law course it was on one of my best classes at UC Berkeley list but we basically basically talked about the law and how different things like bias, false memories, witness testimonies all affect the law and how the law plays out in real life. And so yeah, hopefully this video was helpful about breaking down what the cognitive science major is like at UC Berkeley. Definitely let me know if you have any questions by leaving a comment down below. Also make sure that you give this video a big thumbs up to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. As always, I post every single Sunday and Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, so I will see you all next time.